and um, okay. So, uh, so today we're going to be uh, the tutorial is about um, the use of language models for um, time series forecasting. And um, so, before we start, can like one of you tell me what is like uh, what is the definition or like of or your understanding of time series forecasting? Uh, or, and what do you know about the method that can be used for forecasting delivery? Yes, uh, I'm back. Uh, so, uh, to my understanding, like I, have, I don't know if I have much understanding, but uh, like time series means uh, is uh, like a thing that is spread through time. So, which means we will be forecasting in in, in a given period. So, mm -hmm. trying to predict uh, what will happen or trying to uh, predict in a in a probability that that will happen. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, yes, so that's uh, exactly the basic definition of forecasting. Basically, it's something that uh, we want to predict in the future. Some, and of course, time series is the data that, like, um, uh, is registered recorded over time. So, like, it's, um, like, can be the same variable, but it's recorded over time, and that's what we want to predict. So, does anyone know, like, uh, or can you tell me, like, the methods, you know, for forecasting, like, um, do you know of any particular models that are used for uh, time series forecasting? Um, think about like um, maybe machine learning models that you know about and the ones that you know are used for forecasting or like could be in your understanding be used for forecasting. Like, uh, okay, um, Sheila? Um, the two models I know that exist the ones I know of are support vector machine and um, random forest to some extent. Okay. Um, uh, yes. So, uh, and Johannes is also mentioning long short term memory, which is also a very good example for like a deep learning uh, model models that are particularly used for a time series forecasting. So there are many models that can be used for time series forecasting. You can think about prediction in time series forecasting as like even a normal in a normal regression. So when when you're trying to predict any variable and like uh, based on other dependent variables, uh, this is regression. So when when you predict one variable from like other features, um, but when you think about time series, like when the variable can depend on like its previous values, so basically you can say the future values depend on uh, past values, and this can be like in an auto regression kind of uh, of model. So yeah, so there are different models. So we'll be going through this, uh, uh, like it's an overview, in a sense. And then we're going to focus on the use of language models, which is new to on in in time series forecasting so this um so let's start uh again as always you can stop me at any moment for questions um so let me share my screen okay so um so yeah, uh, so like this is the content we're going to be talking about like a short uh, like time series forecasting what it is and uh, basically uh, I'm just going to mention some terminology there. Um, then there are three different uh, like uh, let's like, say big methods to approach uh, time series forecasting. There is the statistical models for forecasting and um like this include like the auto regression moving average uh like and then there are like a little bit more advanced or more public uh, uh more used more methods like ex as exponential smoothing and arima 
models, uh, or this is like a average um, auto regression. Uh, um, like, a, and it's, it's a model that is like it has a auto regression and more than average uh, aspects. Uh, so, and then finally, so sorry, and then we move to the next is deep learning techniques. Um, is it going to be just all all of this is just going to be short like uh, explanation or like part of review of what it is, and then we will focus on uh, the LLM for forecasting. And this is the use basically of transformers for, for time series forecasting. And uh, we will focus on chronos and maybe like it's like it's not really a demo, it's just like uh, showing an example use of chronos basically. So it's not really something um, why, like you be not something that's very involved, just like a simple um, thing. So as you mentioned, another work is defined basically is that time series forecasting is just using historical data of some variable to predict its future values. And uh, so statistically thinking about this, the future value of this of whatever we are, this unknown thing we are trying to forecast is a random variable uh, in, in statistical terms. And basically what we are saying here is that the variation, like think about any like um, say the stock market for example we are looking at the price of let's say the meta company stock and at any like if i like uh, at this point let's say i don't know what is the price but uh, so we know the price of for the stock for today and like uh, have historical values for it uh, over years uh say if i ask you like what will be the price tomorrow and what will be the price in a month and then in a year. So you're like um, just thinking uh, like um, um, intuitively, you can say like maybe tomorrow the, the price is not going to be so drastically different from today's. But in a month, uh, maybe you will be less certain about like what you can predict. And even in a year, that is even less certainty. So it's like uh, the further you go into the future, the more like the variation will increase so basically um this is like uh, basically this is what i'm talking about like the like time dependence basically here and um so uh, again so when we do forecast uh forecast prediction we get a forecast predict what we are predicting is not an exact value usually like if you say like the stock price tomorrow is going to be like today let's say it's 30 dollars i don't know and then tomorrow i'll say like it's going to be 29.9 so this is like a precise forecast which is called a, a point forecast so this is a specific value but usually we forecast uh, um we have a prediction interval so i'm going to say i think it's going to be between like uh, 29 point uh, 0.7 and then 30.2 or something like that so it's an interval and i would say like i am like 95 percent confident that the price is going to be between these two values so this is an interval like i think about it if like this is the stock the stock price this is not actually the stock price this uh, graph is the number of visitors to australia over years and then like they stopped at some point so this is an old graph uh, and then they predicted the, the number of visitors in the future. This band is the interval. And the line, the one in the middle, is the average, basically the average of the all possible values or the future predictions, or the, it's a middle in, the, in my prediction interval. And I call this the prediction points. Um, okay, so this is just like a terminology on how this works. Um, this is what I talk, talked about. So this is what we pointed forecast is what, uh, like, yeah, it's uh, a specific uh, precise uh, value, which is the average of possible future values. And, uh, okay, final thing that we can, terminal, like, final term I want to say is the forecast distribution. So uh, knowing if, say, that, I know the values of some variable x from 1 to c. So it is like, think about it, like the current value. So from 1 to c, I know all of these values. 
and I want to predict the next point, the next value, which is C plus one, then the forecast distribution is this probability distribution of finding, of getting some value of X, C plus one, given that I know this. So this is a conditional uh, probability, if you remember this from, I think, last week. Uh, so this is a probability distribution. This probability distribution is what's called forecast distribution. So usually in our models, we get what the output will be is a forecast distribution, basically. Um, yeah, so, um, okay. So starting, so any questions so far? Let's just. Um, okay. uh, all right, so for statistical method of, of uh, forecasting, there is, a, like I'm going to just mention a couple, um, just like it's a general understanding of how these things work. So um, so in exponential smoothing, like uh, you know what weighted average is, right? So you take a window in your um, like window in time, because this is a time series, you can take a window of time and calculate the average and basically calculate uh, um, um, a moving average. But okay, so in exponential smoothing, uh, what we what what it is, it's like the forecast for the future is a weighted average from past observation, observations. And what we are doing is that it's exponential because you give the most recent uh, values higher weight and uh, like the further in the past, you give them less and less weight. So, and that's because this decreasing in weight basically uh, like uh, resembles an exponential um, expansion basically. Um, so, like, uh, this is why it's called exponential smoothing. And um, so, yeah, so the most recent observation will be high, have a higher uh, weight or higher effect on your future value, while the more further in the past will have less. So, um, it's, it's a quick, uh, like, a, it's a quick model to, to work. It gives you, like, reliable values. And, of course, it's more the more advanced versions of it. What I'm described is just the simplest kind. Like, if I think about it, like, if you want to think about it in uh, mathematics. So, the, like, the simplest forecast for the future is said to say that the next value is going to be equal to the, like, the current value. So, this is the, the, the simplest thing, the naive thing. Uh, the average is to calculate the average over all time for all the past values, but for like in simple exponential smoothing, you are like weighing yt is the current value, and then like uh, so uh, alpha, sorry. So alpha is the weight, which is smoothing parameter is less than one. So um, you see, like when you multiply it uh, further, further, these are smaller, smaller, smaller parameters. So you're getting less and less contribution from like further in the past. So this is T, the current value, T minus one, T minus two are having less and less contributions. Um, there are more advanced versions of this because this doesn't account for any trends or seasonality in the data. And you can see because like it tends to give you like a Y, like in the, like the future value is going to be more or less um, like uh, just some kind of an average it's like it's not exactly an average but like it still is some kind of an average so um if there is a trend increasing trend or decreasing is going to disappear basically if you do this naively or this like in the simplest way so to account for trends or seasonality you have to add like more 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 parameters basically and account for the slope or the trend uh basically so yeah with some like um some modifications, this model becomes very reliable and very um, much better at predicting basically. So the next one is this uh, ARIMA, that, as I said uh, earlier, is autoregressive integrated moving average. So um, this one is includes like the autoregressive part. Uh, you have moving average part, and this is integrated is basically that you remove um um like you different di what is it? you do some what is called differencing which is removing the the trends and seasonality from your from your data basically so um 
this is, is a way to account for trends and seasonality in the data. So like this makes the model more um, capable of like uh, accounting for, for any trends or seasonality in the data. So like making the prediction better. Uh, so yeah, so this is the explanation of a stationary like um, um, time series, but like, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I like, um, you know, what is a trend, like when the data is increasing or decreasing. So in, in this is what I call a trend, seasonality, if like uh, there is obvious change that uh, uh, repeats over a, um, a fixed period of time. So this is a year, you can see. So like it's like uh, there is an obvious um, repeating trend. So um, like, uh, it's decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing at the beginning of the year, increasing at the end of the year, and so on. So it's repeating, this is seasonality. And finally, when the data has uh, like uh, cycles that are not periodic, or like uh, not, no obvious trends, this is called the stationary, basically. So you can get, with differencing, you can get like remove, like or separate, decompose, basically decompose, the trend part of the of the of the of the time series and the seasonality and you remain with like what is called a stationary time series uh, okay this is just an explanation of like terminology is like um i know you don't necessarily need to understand all of this i just need you to have some kind of basic understanding of how these things works um okay so uh, we will move on to the deep learning techniques. I will even explain less about this because like I assume that you know better. Uh, so um, we have in uh, the long short term memory network, which are deep learning networks are exactly recurrent uh, neural networks and they are designed basically to, um, to like handle sequence data and to avoid long-term dependency problem, that is, is like a problem with the recurrent, uh, with the RNN. Um, so they are basically capable of learning and remembering uh, information over extended time interval. So talking about time, so this, like they handle sequences and this can be like a, a time series. So basically you like, it's like perfectly, um, it's perfectly suitable for for time series forecasting, and um, yeah. So, like, I'm not going to explain much about this. More more about this. There are also the use of CNN, which is convolutional uh, neural network, which is like a, not apparent. Uh, maybe what what you know about CNNs is that they are used for image processing, and they're very good at uh, like uh, identifying spatial um hierarchies and spatial patterns but uh, in they are can be adapted for time series forecasting and they're very good as uh, scenarios where the, um, the data the input data is complex and has uh, like uh, local patterns so basically they are uh, they use they basically turn in the time series data into like um, two-dimensional data and basically like use CNNs with that, with, uh, with it. Um, okay, so, and like make use of this capability of CNNs into like uh, recognizing patterns in, in the time series data and getting like a good forecasting with them. So this is what we have for before. Um, so yeah, so the final thing I want to say is that of course, like, um, both the statistical models and uh, the deep learning models is that so they okay so I should I should have said that before like um, statistical models can of course um, or the value in deep learning models over statistical models is that they can handle huge amount of data of course and they can like also learn complex patterns that like uh, maybe the statistical model are not capable of of um, picking up so um 
uh, what I'm talking here about here is that even the deep learning model, even though they have a strength in extracting patterns from large collection of time series data, they have a weakness. Is that uh, the weakness is that they work on the like the normal machine learning regime, right? They you get them training data, they learn from it, and then you can try them on test data. So basically, you have to use them like you have to give them domain knowledge as if we, you think about the terminology we use with language models we you have to show them like data from the same kind of time series basically to get the to get uh, prediction on them it's not something that you can just train your model on some kind of uh, time series data then use it on as some completely different time series data they don't learn generalized uh, forecasting they learn like a specific domain um uh, uh forecasting uh they have a specific domain forecasting ability after training um so they don't have transfer le learning yes uh one second so one moment so basically it's a whole so so this weakness as we said it's just like when coming from language models when we have this great uh, large L uh, the LLMs, because they showed transfer knowledge, they basically, they learn from, like they are trained all this huge amount of data. And then the knowledge they get, basically, they can be transferred from like two different domains that they were not specifically trained on. They have this, what we call zero shot, uh, like performance ability to, to perform on things that they haven't, been pre-trained, fine-tuned, or like uh, prompt engineering for. Um, so the idea is that if you can have a model that maybe you train over some time series data, and it can like basically you train it for to forecast, then you can transfer this knowledge to any kind of time series data and like uh, basically make a model that can. Um, can be used for forecasting on any kind of new data just you have you don't have to train it for specifically on it you can just like um, um, it's a, going to be general purpose a foundational model as it, as, it, as it's called i think is uh yeah so there was a question Uh, yes, uh, so yeah, the, you say that they are being trained, uh, I think the CNNs on, like, on prediction. So w what does it mean on be being trained on specific data or forecasting on specific data? So like, wouldn't, wouldn't that defeat its purpose of forecasting? It's just maybe I'm understanding it wrong. No, no, it, it's fine. It's uh, I know that's like uh, because here what what we're, what we're talking about transfer learning is like from the language model kind of point of view. So yeah, so let's say like um, I'm not saying anything new that you don't know. So yes, so like say that you want to predict the price of a, some stock, some some stock you want to predict this price to generate a model that can predict stock prices, you have to train it on stock prices data. So historical data. And then if you train it, um, like, and then like, um, and test it and you get good performance, basically you can use it uh, as a future for predicting stock prices. That's like what you trained it for, but you cannot go and use it for weather for forecasting. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about. So you cannot jump domains. That's what I'm what I'm saying. Language models, and this is like is this is just an idea. Is that's what I'm saying? The idea is that, um, uh, yeah. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, it does. It's it's my. It seems like uh, it's fine tuning. Like it seems is it resembles fine tuning because it's getting uh, like uh, domain knowledge such as financials or just the stock market data. So we and when you another another my other, my other question is when you train it like for example you maybe we trained it on five years of data. So can it predict 
uh, in the next one year or less? Do we know? Do we know that? No. So this will depend. Um, so the accuracy of the model this will depend on the details of the what you trained and like um, usually uh, the. Um, so like uh how well it performs and for what period of time this will depend on how you trained it and how it, what data you used and like specific performance you get from it so it's not something that is universal that's what i'm saying is that um the thing is that what is new here and this is uh, maybe a bit confusing is, uh, is that what transfer not, um, learning what uh, sorry transfer of knowledge we're talking about here is what happened with LLMs. So with LLMs, you train them, them on this a large, uh, huge amount of text, and they gain some language understanding. And somehow, like even if they, the models were not trained on, like let's say on legal or medical um, knowledge at all, when like even they were tra not trained on them, uh if you use them like in just zero shot um, um usage so without giving them example without fine tuning without anything when you ask them like you say like uh give them some text and then you say like uh, answer me this question you find like they can have some kind of understanding of in this new domain so it's like they transfer their knowledge from the domain they were trained on to something new they haven't seen at all it's um it's a thing that is different to what like was like uh, the usual usage of um, machine learning models, which are more like machine learning models usually are like compared to LLMs. Of course, they are. Of course, uh, these are also machine learning models. So what, I, what I'm saying is that the traditional ones that we use are usually small. They are smaller in parameter. Even though deep learning models, of course, have like a lot of a lot of parameters, but still. Large, like just, I'm just comparing in scale. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the smaller models and big models, so the bigger models are have huge a number of parameters and they are trained on a huge amount of data. And basically, um, somehow they get this ability to like uh, in this is in language. So we're not talking about time series in particular here, but. In language, they get this um, uh, ability to have like a general understanding from, of language. They don't understand language in a particular context that what they were trained on. They understand it in general. So even if you introduce a domain they were not trained on, they still kind of capable of performing well, if not like perfectly, but still they can perform um, well, and on average, something that like smaller models cannot do, or a smaller approach, like to other approaches, I cannot do. Does this make sense? I I'm, I feel like I'm maybe confusing you because it's. Um, I'm not saying something that is precise, really. So. Okay, let's see if it will uh, become clearer in a bit. So what I'm saying here is just like what the idea that which comes next is the use of ll uh, or language models or like think about the transformer architecture basically for time series for forecasting there is use of actually there are several approaches to use these big models for time series forecasting mm -hmm. so um one of them is like uh uh just basically this is like some people have uh, like tried this and they get some kind of um, some decent performance for out of it um is that they just change so they just uh, like uh, translate uh, the time series data they have it's numerical or like or like yeah so it's from numerical whatever it is uh, format they change it to text they pass it as is to to the llm and they ask like like for example like i have this stock prices and then i change all my stock prices in the historical data to text i pass it to my llm so I like basically i go to chat let's say and then 
in the in the chat i say like uh, given this historical data on the stock price of uh, for the meta company uh, and then i enter all of this time series data i have and then i say like predict for me the values for this stock price for like the next uh, two months and then the model will, will output something for you and this basically is one way to use LLMs for time series forecasting. Just very simple uh, usage of um, of LLMs. They are as is without uh, like any fine tuning or like extra pre training or anything. So this is one way. Uh, the thing, the idea, of course, is that throughout all of this huge training of these models. Um, they came across like some kind of uh, like they gained some kind of knowledge that will make them capable of seeing patterns and predicting um, values basically from the data they were given. So this is some idea. Another thing is that you can uh, like another approach that people have tried so far is fine tuning LLMs for time series tasks. So they will take an LLM and then they fine tune it with uh, time series. Um, they will get some time series data and basically they will fine tune the LLM to perform, like to predict values used, like from, they will train it, fine tune it. That's the, thing, the same thing that you did with Amharic, you remember Amharic uh, language? You fine tune your model to use on time series data and you fine tune it for forecasting. So, and then you get some kind of model. Uh, so, but it usually, okay, so this is one, another way. Another thing is that you take a transformer model. So it's not an LLM that is, so it's not a language model. It's not a, a transform model that was trained on for language. And so you're not taking a, a model that is already uh, like pre-trained and you you are like fine tuning it. You are completely pre-training a transformer model. So the model, um, the same architecture as the language models, but you are fine to, uh, you are pre-training it from the start with time series, time series data. So the idea there is that you, in the same way that you, um, uh, what? So the same way that you like, uh, you take it uh, in, when you pre-train or even fine-tune the uh, LLMs, you tokenize language, right? And you create some kind of vocabulary, you create an embedding. And so the, your model will learn an embedding for this data, basically learning the meaning, like uh, the meaning in context of these tokens. And then basically we like learn how to uh, predict next words in, in, your, in the language. Uh, they are using the same idea to, instead of a sequence of words, they're using a sequence of uh, data in time. So this is time series. So instead of sequence of of uh, of language, so the language, the sequence of words is a sequence of of time series data. So it's just a similar idea, just applied to similar architecture, similar. Uh, approach to training and they are using it for for time series forecasting and this is the one that we are going to use see in the example so like any question here and i'm saying uh, some blah 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 so i will just in in i will so the first two are really nothing um i'm, I'm just going to focus on this a little bit, not really so much in details, but just a little bit when we explain this Kronos approach. So a Kronos model, some model. So, um, so again, as I said, they see a similarity between the task of a language model to predict the next token. But the next token there is a word or subword, uh, and the task of a time series forecasting model was to predict the next value. They both fundamentally aim to model sequential structure of data so if you think if you look at like the mathematics of this so a time series forecasting you have uh, a time series so you will have data historical data from x from one to c 
which is x1 to xc. And what you want is to predict the join distribution for the next h value. So if, if you are not looking at this one, so the next h values, so there are, um, it will be the probability of x from c plus 1 to c plus h, given that you have the data from x from 1 to c. Okay, so this is the time series forecasting. Uh, LLMs, they work in a similar way. You can see that you have a sequence of input tokens. So it's W, let's say, uh, from 1 to K. So it's W1 to WK. And then the LLMs aim is to predict the next token by modeling the conditional distribution P of WK plus 1. And of course, it can be like a, sequ it's a sequence of, of a new uh, future tokens. So it can be also similar to that one from k plus 1 to k plus h, given that you have the, the like, you know, the, like the, the previous sequence from 1 to k. So you can see, like, just from this formalism, it's just they look similar. So it's the same thing. Uh, so it's the same. But can you see, like, there is a difference between the two? like uh, like a basic difference between the two things here. Yes, they are sequences, and yes, you are predicting the next one or the next uh, sum, like the next number of, of values uh, in, both, in both cases. But the difference is here that the value of x, x is usually, um, Usually, like um, it's a, it can be any kind of uh, a variable, it can be a real number. So the va its values can really like be like you have infinite possibilities, right? While uh, a word or a token usually you have uh, a vocabulary that is limited, so you have like only a, a finite number of possibilities. So. This is a, the difference between this is a continuous variable, why this is categorical. So, yeah, uh, question? Um, the conditional distribution. So, yeah, it's a probability distribution of uh, like, uh, so, uh, the condition distribution, like uh, if you, it's basically um, so. Okay, uh, let me explain it with an example. Um, so uh, let's say um, so. Think about the simplest kind of um, uh, probability distribution, like uh, throwing uh, a die, a dice. So it's a die, the one is a die. So throwing a die, you have like, uh, what is the probability of getting, like it's a fair die. So um, um, if you throw, like what is the probability of getting two if you throw if you throw it once? So the probability will be one, one over six, right? This is the probability and the probability distribution basically is that each value of this six from one to six has a one over six probability. This is, this is the, the probability, um, um, the probability, it's not a probability distribution function, but it's a probability mass function here because they have discrete values. Okay, so this is, you understand this is a probability, like this is a probability, just a probability, not, no, not conditional. Say, um, uh, okay, so I don't know, it's like a terrible, I, I feel like I'm a uh, terrible way to explain it without writing it down. So, um, okay, um, let's see the. Okay, so the thing that I should explain is that there is what is called a joint distribution, a joint probability distribution. So this is like um, uh, when you have like multiple variables, let's say I have A and B, or like if I throw the die twice, um, this there are two variables here, right? Uh, 
um, the value the value of the like the the number you get on the first die and the number you get on the second die. They are, they to, together they have a, what is called a joint distribution function or a probability a joint probability distribution. Um, so, uh, it, like if you know the value of one of the variables, the joint distribution function will become what is called the conditional one because like you already what is so. Uh, what will be the probability of getting A given that you know B, B value is this is this thing. So uh, to give it an example with the die just continuing, I can say like in the joint distribu uh, probability distribution, uh, getting um, a number that is uh, like sums up to 10 will have some kind of value. So like you will, you will count that um, sums up to 10. So like you have to get like maybe in the first die four and then six and or the first one five and then five and uh, the, then you can get six and then four so these are the what the sums up to ten these are three possibilities out of 76 this is three over 76 which is one over nine so that this is the probability of getting the sum or equal to ten and of course like uh, if you all possible values, this would be the probability distribution in total. Uh, but if I tell you, um, if I already told you that, what is the probability of get, so the probability of getting 10 as a sum equal to 10 is one over nine. But if I told you like the first die, I got six, what is the probability of getting a total of 10? Can you answer this or work? Like this is a conditional probability. So I already told you that the first die gave you six. What is the probability that the total sum will be 10? And basically, if you already know that, uh, yeah, so if we already know that the first one is six, you can say like uh, there are, it's going to be like one over six, basically, that you can get 10, because it's like one over six to get four on the second die, uh, which is actually like, uh, because you already, summed up all the probability for the other, uh, for the, the first one, and then, yeah. So this is the calculation, basically. But this is, a, like, what is it? I hope that you got a lot of the meaning of the condition. I, I think I did a terrible job of explaining it. But, um, but like, yeah, so what I'm saying here, that is the probability here we're talking about is what is the probability of getting some value or some word here or some value x here given that i know the values for from the historical values up to the the current one so if i know x from one to c what is the probability for getting a particular value here so and then the like the probability of each possible value together is what's called the distribution basically so i'm not explaining it precisely in mathematically precise but it's that is just uh, the meaning um Okay, so uh, yeah, so just looking at this too, that's what I was talking about, that the time series forecasting and uh, what LLM does is look similar. They have sequences of data, and then you have to, to predict the next one or the next few, and you have to calculate this distribution, uh, basically. Um, so they look similar so they seem like uh, yeah so it seems like the idea is that you can adopt the arch architecture and the approach for how lms work to for time series forecasting seems kind of intuitively it makes sense the only difference between the between them is that x here can be a continuous variable so it can have continuous values while uh, in language, the to we have tokens, and the tokens have a limited number. So the total number of will be the total tokens you can have is the vocabulary, and the vocabulary, even if it's huge, can be like in thousands and like even in millions. But um, it's still uh, or it's hundred thousands maybe, but it still is it's limited, it's finite. Uh, while well, this can be continuous. So what we need to do basically was the idea of coronas they had, they thought about doing is they discretize basically the values for the, 
for the time series variable they created they what they call quantized but it's discretizing basically so you just basically uh, create uh, bins for your variables and basically these bins will become your tokens and they basically then they go on and use exactly the same architecture the same approach to how LLMs are trained they just use like the tokens will be the bins for the value for the time series so the vocabulary will be like different from like it's still tokens like uh, and the, you, you know that in the model it handles just the id the token id and then the data will be of course time series data then they will train the model on. So that's what they basically did. So they tokenized the time series into discrete bins. And um, so they scale, first they scale the, the variable and quantize it, basically discretizing it. And of course, after, as the output, the, the prediction will be uh, dequantized. So they will, um, they will, from a bin, you will get an actual continuous value, and um, then it will be uh, like a reverse scale, so you will get the normal, normal scaling. So the thing here is what they are working with, that they think this is a, a good way to go, is that they can train the smaller kinds of transformer models instead of using the, the big ones for, you remember, like in the approaches that use like the just transform the time series data to text and just use it directly. It's uh, it's better to use like the bigger models, but here they can use smaller models to train. And yeah, so this is their approach. What they do is that they take time series data, they scale it and quantize it. So they just like put it in bins and basically create tokens. And uh, and these tokens will be passed to like a time series language model. So this is a transformer model, and you will create some probabilities, uh, predicted probabilities, and then you like uh, of course the model is trained with cross entropy, with cross entropy loss, um, the same way that uh, language models are trained. And basically, yeah, so the output you get like uh, tokens and then you do the quantization and, uh, and scaling to get the probabilistic forecast. So this is how chronos work. Um, and they, yeah, so like, um, so this is a quantization, so they don't need to go through this really. It's just like um, mathematics, how you create pins. And yeah, so that how it works in general um let's say i want to show you like a like using it so yeah chronos what is it has a limitation where like this model is trained only for one dimensional value so it's only predicting like one variable not not a, like um but it can like the idea is that it can this can be um generalized to like a multi-dimensional uh, uh, forecasting. So handling a, a variable that is like a vector instead of a vector of time series, not just one variable. So yeah, so as an example here, so as I said, this is a, a model. So they build this on basically on the transformer, um, you know, transformer library from Hugging Face. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically, you can down like uh, pip install Chronos, use it. And here, like, uh, I'm using it with um, so the data here is like, uh, let's say, let me share you so the app and then head. So, this is the number of passengers from some airline airline uh, and, uh, passengers by month and like it's uh, over a period of years so this is like a one-dimensional time series and what they do is that like what happens here is that you just use a chronos pipeline so it's using uh, this um, model 
and uh, of course I'm, I'm using GPU here um, and basically here you predict like uh, there are like uh, different um, parameters you can pass the prediction length and the number of samples you you, you pass to the model and so so it's basically just to show let's see okay it works you see the prediction so yeah this is what you get so this is an 80 percent prediction interval you can see this is um like um yeah so this was what yeah so it's simply how it works basically um so there is like it's simple, very simple to use it. And uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So. There are not, nothing terrible that I can explain here more. Um, yeah, so it's basically there are other approaches if you look around. There are like another, maybe I'm referencing the, in the doc current documents, there is a reference to another kind of model um, as well. And there are different approaches on how to do this. So some, some do it with fine tuning, some do it with pre training. And so there is not exactly just. Uh, there are multiple approaches and you can look them up. Um, of course, um, yeah, so any questions? So I honestly, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so usually time series has like this is the definition of a time series that it is uniformly like uh, like if it's like a daily data or like monthly data. Otherwise, like it will not make sense for you to to. Um, so like uh, if it's if you don't have a unif an uniform one, so so basically if you like are registering sometimes the data by month sorry by day and then you miss some days and you have like one over week so basically what you have here is like a time series that has missing data and basically you can you can treat that the way you treat like um, like when you treat missing data usually uh, of course you can choose to yeah you can choose to reduce to like be, make your interval bigger so that you don't have missing data or you can try to fill this somehow or so you can like you have to handle it some way um yeah so i was expecting honestly and question to say like how like why how does this relate to what we are doing so what you're doing right now is um like nowhere that you are doing actually forecasting, right? Well, even though, yeah, you are you are implementing these strategies in backtesting, basically because you want to forecast like how well your like uh, strategy will work in the future. Okay, but you are not exactly uh, trying to for, uh, to trying to forecast um, the values from the future. You're just like trying a strategy on the past to 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 see how it performed in the past and saying like okay we assume that it will work in the future the same way somehow but of course this is all like the with the, with them um how to say so this is with like uh, with the simplest way is the strategies that can be built basically but you can build a strategy that use and like uh, some time series forecasted. So this is LST, LSTM, but you can use like uh, even a language model time series forecasting or other kind of time series forecasting model to predict the value in the future and on that decide what is your um, like uh, your your like your strategy can base can be based on those. 
Um, so instead of like this is like a more advanced way to to um, to to design a strategy, and basically you can look um, if you want to go with that you can look around basically for how to incorporate using an lstm uh forecasting model or like um so yeah like an, an llm will be like uh, will work in a similar way but because these are you will find that references for them basically as uh like uh, for example this one is just can backtest like use an LSTM and then backtest using uh backtrader. Yes. Yes, I'm what? So my, when, when is the time we'll be choosing uh, this LSTM? So as opposed to different types of backtests. Uh, it's not uh, as opposed to different types kind of backtests. It's uh it's a as like it's a different and advanced indicator to use. So it's not in this in it's not in least you are still going to be backtesting it, but it's just an advanced um kind of indicator you can use. Like um, do you mean advanced in complexity or like what what is the meaning of advanced? It's advanced because we are using an actual model to predict the future for you and then on that yeah. you can base your strategy um uh for like uh, for doing what you want to do basically so um let me say it's how to yeah. so like uh, maybe i'll have you explain how you do you like you do a, a normal back testing can give you an example give me an example explain it so okay the simplest example is uh, moving average so mm -hmm. so we can we can use in, in a small period for example if we have like 20 days moving average so we'll average the price for 20 days so we can get the prediction out of that i guess yeah so this is a prediction i'm talking about back testing can you explain the whole thing like there is a strategy there you want to implement and uh, um let's say like uh and and you want to test it on your historical data you get some kind of result and then you after that like uh, this result is what you will decide if you're going to act to act as a strategy in the future or not so so let's mm -hmm. say yeah so let's say like uh, let me use a moving average and ex like uh, and like devise some strategy based on it a strategy what i'm talking about strategy here is like a trading strategy so let's say if uh, i have some holdings so and okay so before i go on with this i have to apologize maybe it will not make sense financially but it's like <laughs> because my understanding in that sense is not great but yeah so just let's say that i have some holdings on of the stock Assuming so, this is all hypothetical, of course, in fact, trading, right? So I say if I have some holding in stocks and then I look at the price of the day and if it's the price, like the closing price is greater than the moving average, so it's higher, then I will, I will decide to sell, right? And if the price is uh, less than the moving average, I will buy something like that. So this is my strategy. Okay. Uh, so I'm basing this using a moving average, right? Here, my indicator, the indicator I'm using is a moving average, and I'm basing my strategy on it. What I will, what the back testing does is that it looks at the, the uh, historical data and say, like, it's, it's like a, a, a what if? What if I did have this stock holding? To like some to like I had this money let's say I had like ten thousand dollars I bought the stock and then I was living in the in the past and I was enacting this strategy of like looking at the moving average and the closing price and deciding each day to sell or to buy. Okay, by the end of some period, how much money will I have? If my strategy is good, I will have some profit. If my strategy was not good, 
it will I would have lost okay so this is like this is what I'm saying like it's a very simple um it's in a sense of uh like having an indicator moving average strategies the one that I described and then like uh, did the back testing using back trader here that to to calculate if I profit it or not in the past okay so this is one way another thing like and that what I am saying in advance advanced indicator instead of using the moving average let's say i was in the past this is like the assumption but instead of using the moving average i was using an lstm model i'm predicting the future and if what i predicted in the future was greater than what is the closing price today meaning the cost of price is going to increase i'm going to what i will do i will buy right i will buy so that like i will like make profit in the future and um instead if my model my model stm predicted that in the future and what i'm talking here is that i'm completely in the past right it is tell me that if today tomorrow is is going to be lower um than today then i'm going i, I i'm not what i'm saying is not is not okay so if it's going to be lower tomorrow i want to sell right i will sell and uh, so basically my strategy is going to be based on an indicator that's an indicator i'm getting from the uh, from the lstm model and uh, this is what i'm talking about does that make sense to you or what uh, somehow but yes. yeah but not completely okay uh, but my, my other question relating yes. to that is also like uh the moving average uh from what i understand so moving average or different types like exponential moving average different types of uh, indicators or strategies might say uh, this is the past data but might not predict when is it so to my understanding do you mean that lstm would say this is the day so maybe it would be it may be in the future by using the indicators but when in the future would not be known if I'm the sun. So yeah, so the it. thing, yeah, so well, you are you are thinking about it in, in, in time and think about it as a sequence. I just have a stock prices, let's continue mm. with stock prices. I have stock prices for daily. I have a daily value. Okay. Like I have just one in, in my sequence, I will enter one value for each day. So my model doesn't necessarily know that it's this day or a month. It doesn't know about time. It just knows that it's a sequence. And what it's doing is predicting the next value. So it's predicting the next value. That means for me, it will be the stock price the next day. That's what this is doing. So it's predicting. I can tell it to predict the next value or the next 20 values. And this we, then we can translate it according to what we how we created our time series but the model itself doesn't know about time it just knows that it's a sequence and it's just predicting the next one does this answer your question or does it clarify a little bit uh yeah okay so, as i so said like, I'm, I'm confused about the definition of the, the st strategist like if uh, I, I get it on a lstm but what about the the strategies does they have like does it predict on the actual date or series on in terms of series um like do do do, do we get uh, when will be the return just like that so this uh, the one will be this is a parameter you have to enter so basically say let's go back to the strategy i devised before i said let me let me just go into i'm sorry like if i'm taking so like we're talking to time but it's uh, if you, anyone who like you can leave if you if it's uh, uh, that is all the time is, is over if you have something else but okay yes no, no but we'll continue with our work so just what i let's let's think about um the, the the example i was mentioning before so i said this is my strategy and this strategy doesn't have anything to do with prediction it doesn't have to do anything to do with like uh it's it's a complete choice it's my choice as a let's say i'm pretending to be a trader here okay 
and say I want my this strategy here was that uh, what I will do or what I wanted to do uh, is to look at the stock price each day and look at the moving average over five days so five days would be like the past the past five days so like let's say uh, this is a window I'm choosing to use five it could be another number it's up to me um so let's say it's a five day window I'm averaging the value of the stock over five days uh, and then comparing the co the the close price uh, for the stock on the day with the average meaning think about it if the value of the stock price today is higher than the average on the past days that means the stock price is increasing or this is a trend i'm seeing just like and just by simple kind of like a prediction is that i'm predicting that tomorrow is going to be increasing that's the thing that there is a, a positive trend so this is a simple way of prediction let's say um so i'm just saying if the value today is higher than the average then, then there is a positive trend and i'm just saying like it's going to be increasing tomorrow so what i will my decision and this is a decision this is completely a choice that i will sell sorry i will buy i will buy so i'm just thinking uh, which which will going to make me money i will buy so that like uh, in the future i can sell at a high price okay so back testing so all of this doesn't have anything to do with back testing this is just like uh like I, i'm using an indicator which is a moving average and moving average is just like uh, a simple kind of um, a predictor let's say and um i'm using just an indicator the moving average and the value of the stock price and i have some decision i will make a decision based on the value of this two the closing price and the moving average if it is higher i'm going to buy if it's at the if the value of the close price is higher than the moving average i'm i'm expect this is i'm saying that is a positive trend the value is increasing i would sell i will buy small stock and if the closing price is lower than the moving average that means there is a negative trend and then i will sell my stocks so that i will not like lose more in the future okay this is a strategy i devise back testing what we'll do is say like okay I will put you completely in a what if situation in the past okay it's like a let's say it's a kind of a simulation but you are i'm using real data just in the past and say if you have actually implemented this strategy in the past over some period let's say i will tell the bacteria test it for me for a, a one year with some starting money like i if i started with uh, one thousand dollar one year ago i implemented this strategy what would have done what would have happened and then the back trader was actually going to run this my 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 strategy is going to run it on historical data so it's going to calculate the moving average and the like compare it to the closing and then sells and like does all of this and um, and then will tell me in the end if i like profited or like lost all of my money or like i'll have like really gained some profit and that my strategy is good and if i found of course the idea is that if i found that in a what if scenario this strategy could have worked in the past that means i can maybe i can use it now and like uh, it will work for me so this is just an assumption that it will work right but yeah so this is the basic thing here um so where lsm comes in is that let's say my strategy is not based on moving average my strategy is based on an lstm model meaning that i say okay i'm going to devise a strategy to sell or buy stock prices but based on what the lstm model will predict for the next uh, uh for the next uh, day stock price so meaning that i will imagine that i will passing historical data at whatever like at what point in time i am in i will pass the historical data i have available to the lsm model it will predict for me the next to, tomorrow's stock price and if that stock price is a uh, predicted one is higher than the one that we, i like for today the closing price for today then if it's higher i'm going to to buy if it's lower i'm going to sell and then this strategy again i will use it 
in backtesting. So say, imagine that I was one year ago and I was implementing this strategy, LSTM and all, within, a, and then backtest it and see if I have, will have gained, profited or not. So it's just the same way, but then instead of an indicator of moving average, I'm using an LSTM prediction. Does this make sense to you? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I had uh, some misconceptions on the back testing part. So I understand yeah. now that I didn't understand something on back testing. Okay. Great. Uh, Hillary? There's a while ago. Yes. Yes. So I have new information that we, and strategy can be based on LSTM, but my question was. Uh, the for time series, um, so we can we also say we we are predicting, uh, we are coming up with future prices, predicting future prices, and simulating now a model against those ones, ag against those predicted prices, uh, that we came up with a model. Uh, what are you talking about? Which model? When are you going to say that's what you're doing? Can you clarify? Um, so, so after we've back tested, we predict the prices uh, using LSTM model or, an, or any other model to, we, we use it on the historical data to give us like, to predict future prices uh, based on that data and the movements. So we, we take that data and, uh, again use it on our on our test if our strategy will work on that in that future predicted price can can that work uh i was trying to integrate time series forecasting uh to see how it works with back test i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i was talking while i muted um okay so I, I'm I'm a bit confused. Well, isn't this what where I was describing uh, with okay. the just a moment ago? N no, uh, yeah. it's different. Uh, you, you said LS, we can have a strategy based on LSTM model. So yeah. let's say we don't have a strategy based on LSTM. Let's say SM, SMA. Can we still use time series forecasting? So you're saying that you don't want to have a strategy about like um, uh, trading or stock price? Uh, stuff you just want to predict the future no 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 i what? i want a strategy that doesn't use lstm because uh -huh. uh, you want you want to use what let's say i use an indicator as sma in this case let's say moving okay. average yeah can i still uh -huh. use time series forecasting uh, like how can i now integrate time series forecasting oh so no, so back testing is is completely in the in historical data. So you're not using forecasting here. Forecasting will come yeah. only if you're working um, uh, if you want to predict the future, uh, or if you like. Um, the thing is that if you are doing back testing on historical data, the data is already there. You don't have to predict the future because the future you're talking about is also in the past, and you have the actual data there. So in, in the back testing itself, there is no prediction because the future, you are completely in the past. So one year ago, uh, so if I was like, I'm imagining myself to be one year ago tomorrow for me, is it still in the past and all the values are known for that time. So there are no prediction that is, uh, is required there. All is happening is calculations on like what would have been done given these values already so uh, there is no prediction involved in the back testing uh, so like couldn't we say that we are trying to identify if there will be a risk or yeah, uh, the, cost? yeah we are trying to identify that but we are using completely uh, historical data so we are not yeah. predicting any value we are like I don't know. Um, there is the prediction. There is all about um, yeah. So we are we are calculating something that didn't happen. So we didn't. We don't. We 
I didn't actually trade this. We didn't actually know that we lost this money, but because this didn't happen, but the stock price is everything else that depends on it. These are all known. So there are no prediction involved there. Um, okay, so does it make sense to you, uh, Hilary? Yeah, it makes sense. So, um, yeah, it makes sense. It's it's like we just have to have a strategy that uses LSTM. Yeah, so if you want to evolve LSTM, yes. If you can, you want to use simpler indicators, that's also basically, um, yeah, fine. So this is just an advanced use. Yeah, so that's, uh, yes. So what, uh, what you're saying is correct. So Thomas again, yes. Uh, so to emphasize on the Hilary's question more, uh, to my, my understanding, I was thinking of uh, getting a, a, a well a strategy that works well on, in the historic data in the back testing. So we'll identify strategies that will that works well. So can we use those strategies on to predict the current trends by like uh, like so, uh, on the in the goal the uh, project uh, mm -hmm. the client or user will submit the you will select a symbol then will will predict will show the back testing result the strategy that works so on the predicting part using the uh, la large uh, model la mm -hmm. language model can we use those uh, uh, strategies can we train the model to use that, those strategies then predict based on those strategies because yeah that that's the question because the purpose okay. of the back testing is predicting the assuming or uh, identifying the, the working parts right yeah so okay so you are uh, what you're what you're suggesting i think uh, maybe in i'm not sure maybe you're if you're confused or not but uh, what you're suggesting is like a complex some kind of a complex effect still of course let's say there are two things involved here in the with the back testing and lstm there is one thing is that if we want to predict future values of some variable can be the stock prices can be weather can be anything what we do is we create like a, we have a model lstm or like an LLM model, or even just a statistical model. And what we do is that we train it on historical data. So we train the model on in historical data, meaning that we train it on past data and we test it on past data. So that we have the real values for, and we see if our model predicts them correctly or not. Okay, this is the prediction part. There is a, Back testing part is where you calculate uh, the like uh, what would have happened to you if you like implemented some strategy, and this has nothing to do with 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 predicting. So you are just like going back in time and calculating some kind of like it's it's just that the strategies because why is back testing it's not something that you calculate at one, one time because like you start if you start like say i started with ten thousand dollars if you implement some strategies like your money is going to be increasing and decreasing like uh, over like a period of time so it's like the, the computation itself is a time series okay so you will be creating a time series for your profits uh, or like your losses over time so that's why it's like a, something involved. It's not just a simple calculation. So what you're talking about is that if there, you have to implement a strategy in the past and somehow predict something in the future, this you can think about, or this is maybe my own like understanding, what made it made me thought, think about when you have really, what do you say? Conflict, com, complex, like, uh, and this is not the case we're considering, but complex effects. Let's say I, um, if I like, um, I don't know, like if you like this makes sense to even say, but um, 
no, there's still not going to be prediction of the future, so this doesn't. Uh, yeah, so what I was, I was saying is that, like, um, instead of just doing some simple trading, this is what we assume we're going to be doing, if we assume we did something that really affected the the okay so okay let me just skip this part uh, i don't know what i can if um so can you can you after like i explain this can you like uh, again tell me what you mean by prediction in in your case because i don't want to say something that is like um i have some idea in my head but it's not uh, maybe it's not what you mean uh, when uh, I was researching on the trends of using uh, strategies, so there are trends so, uh, up, up, up trend and the down trend. So when we test the back testing, mm -hmm. so we'll get a strategy yeah. uh, that that works for for one data, probably for Bitcoin or some other data. So using that data, it may be if if the price falls three days then pull if the price rises uh, for uh, three days then buy yeah. sell mm -hmm. this kind of strategy so yeah it does it doesn't matter for the volatility of the product uh, maybe the, the, the stock but the strategy that works so okay. using that using that uh, strategy so for for the current trend maybe for some the stock currently going on can we can we implement that strategy to the l to the llm to the large language to l, l then can we can we ask the llm to predict based on that strategy so oh, if yes. we do this kind of things yes. for the next yes. five three days what yeah. will be the, the result here yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So you are like um, you are suggesting like an opposite of a back trading of back testing. Maybe. So if uh, yes. So what you are saying is that like in back testing we are using historical data to test these strategies. Uh, yeah. We can also do the basically like look forward instead of looking back and say like if we implement this strategy today we will use like some model to predict the future values for like stock prices and then test that this um this uh strategy will work how will it will it work and if it will like uh, how profit how much profit it will get me and how much like loss i it will get so so this is another another test for your strategy let's say so another test of this kind of a prediction of prediction of how it will perform uh using a prediction for the future but it's not uh, like you have to consider that it is not a test okay. A test has to, you, 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 when you test, you have to know the actual, the real, when you, the testing data, you use, you have to use like data, you have to make predictions, but you have to know the ground truth to, so that you can compare between them, right? So in back testing, that is an actual test of the strategy because you know the values, the actual, the ground truth. While if you test on future predictions, this is going to be a prediction again. It's not going to be a test. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it makes sense, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so any other questions? Um, I think we are like uh, plenty over time, but this was, I think we had uh, some good questions.